questions while I never been to Nigeria. But I would like to stress the point that uh, while we are doing our gaps and needs analysis, we should even take in consideration the all of our NGOs and, uh, of course, UN uh, agencies, uh, we have to stress the point about uh, partial impartiality. So that can be a point that uh, can allow us to be uh, even deeper in, on the field. Uh, of course, through maybe the local NGOs, something that uh, can allow us to, to, to have more access on the field. But... Uh, just, just this because I saw in my past experience that uh, it was something that uh, really worked uh, in order to achieve and to, 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 to arrive uh, straight to the beneficiaries. Thanks. That's all. Thank you. Um, I don't know if Virginie would like to come back on that. You did uh, comment on the fact that there is a big gap in the resources between uh, national NGOs and uh, uh, international NGOs, of course, uh, and you would uh, encourage uh, local investments. I, I don't know if you're still there, but whether you're able to reply. Yes, there you are. Hello. I think you need to- I told you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah. OK, sorry. I told, you, I told you before that we have a lack of connectivity in the country. And I'm at home now with COVID, so I missed the question. Can you repeat, please? Yes, the, the question really was about um, the fact that there should be more work with uh, uh, local NGOs. Yeah, yeah. And one of the problems also with the local NGOs is that they are not really um, trained to fulfill all the, you know, the, the donors' uh, um, aims or you know the all the administrative that they have to do for for requesting a, an aid sometimes um, so I guess that would be the first step it's it's my opinion and uh, yeah and also sometimes the local NGOs have more resources in uh, in transportation for example in uh, in Central African Republic they are more using the the um, uh, fluvial transport um yes and uh, then the the international ngo because they don't have the um, they are not used to it so yeah sometimes they are they, they have more resources because they know the country they know the the language they are more um able to negotiate the prices but um, they cannot fulfill all the administrative uh things that the donors are asking or they are not trained for that, so perhaps it would be the first step. It's my point of view. Thank you very much. And I thought, Athalie, did you raise your hand and uh, want to come in at all? Hi, Anya. Uh, sorry, is that working okay? Yep. Okay. Um, no, I just really wanted to add to the, the comments that Gilles made earlier, is that we really do want to hear from partners on this. I, I recognise at the end of the day it's not the best moment, or whichever time zone people are in, but a lot of these questions, when you look at the number of operations we've got, of the 13 logistics cluster operations at the moment, over 50% are in protracted crises, often with um, many uh, challenges, but most of them have a conflict setting as well. So I think it, you know, maybe now is not the best moment for people, but would really, really like to encourage all of our, our partners and, and the participants to, to feedback their perspectives on all of these questions and to add any additional ones that they have. Thank you, Atli. Um, I'm going to um, bring in uh, Susan uh, Hodgson. Uh, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Um, I just want to, I might be playing a bit of devil's advocate here, but I just want to bring this through. I, I you know, I do think um, there is a gap between na uh, strengthening national partners. Um, certainly for Save the Children, it's something we're addressing this year. We've done a ops assessment on that and we're engaging directly in what we can do to do that better. Um, but just to bring this back to is, is just to highlight that Capacity versus partners is not just the logs cluster responsibility, it's the partner, it's the senior partner's responsibility to build that into the programme planning. Uh, so if you were a lead partner, for example, and I know this is a gap, I, I, I've been party to it, but 
if we're the lead partner and we're engaging with a partner on supply chain issues and it's a local partner, then the international agency does have does have a commitment or should have a commitment to put that funding in the budget to support that partner and build it both in the short term and in the long term. So I don't feel it's just I think the logistics cluster can support and there's lots of training out there. I think it's just supporting the national partners to be able to access some of that training. But um, I don't want to take away from the fact that some of this is down to program planning and being able to plan this in when they do their proposals and building into the proposals with the donor as much as it is the logs cluster to deal with. It's also a partner, to, a senior leadership partner issue. So I'm playing a bit devil's advocate, but I'm putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much for that, um, Sue. And um, I think Lionel, um, Lajou from CRS, you, did you raise your hand? Yes, sorry, I was mute. Hello. Uh, good uh, yeah, afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Yeah, I did raise my, my hand. Um, yeah, the, the, I think the, the, the question is really, really complex. And I think it has been there for, for a while. And uh, looking at, really looking at, we, from my perspective, we could look at localization um, and pursuing the lo localization agenda to transfer the, the capacity uh, and, uh, and the skills to, uh, to local org organization. Um, but really what we need, I think what we need to consider with, by having it, this approach is really to understand how those, those local organizations operate in, in terms of, of funding. Uh, in many, many, many places, their, their funding is for essentially for the, 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 the response itself. So there is no uh, barely a little funding uh, available for, um, to, to support uh, or to take over uh, coordination, uh, log cluster coordination role at the local level. So I think this is really where we, we should be looking at at it and maybe uh, working on um, creating a pool of um, yeah, local um, logisticians who could, took, who could take over this ro role and, and also just very important, as Susan said, just the, the role of the leadership of those, those organizations is also critical. Over for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so yes, a, a pool of local logisticians which would of course uh, be a, a wonderful solution if it were if it were easy um so and we also had a uh, i think leonardo uh from intersos you raised your hand as well leonardo are you there yes i'm there but it was from previous intervention oh. but no 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 but well you I, can speak please <laughs> <laughs> thanks no maybe sorry for my poor english maybe i was not able to express myself properly before but i wanted just to highlight the issue that uh, with the, our uh, impartiality we could even reach through the local ngos the all parts involved in the in the let's say in the general situation of some countries like central africa republic in that way we can achieve even uh, uh, the possibility to um, in some uh, places where it's not so easy. I mean, when we express the, the, cap the, the issues that we are impar impartial with all the, all the parts that uh, are in the country, the, the recognize and the not uh, recognize it, uh, through the local NGOs, it will be possible from my point of view to reach uh, some places and to develop our projects. Thanks. Thank you. Um, just before we uh, finish. I just wanted to ask uh, uh, both uh, Virginie and uh, Mushin uh, a question about trying to uh, marry up uh, localization and also training. Um, so we've heard about both. We've heard how difficult both are. What, what do you think is needed to, to fill those two gaps? Uh, Mushin. Yeah, I think from our end, we have um, started to understand where those gaps are uh, and what kinds, I mean, um, like it said, like the first responsibility a lot of the time is of the of the international organization that's partnering with the local organization to implement. 
um, and they should be the first um, source of help to that local partner if they need something. So for example, um, if you have a big UN agency and they have a local actor on the ground and the local actor is in need for augmented storage, their first point of contact should be that large UN agency that they're working for, uh, both in terms of um, you know logistics help as well as trainings as well. Um, so capacity building does lie, uh, some of the responsibility does lie on, on them as well. However, we've also realized that um, we need to build capacity not uh, in, in all aspects, but in certain things that would allow organizations to work on their own, such as, um, you know, how to deal with uh, vendor management, how to come together uh, and form consortia, um, you know, to do things together, uh, how to better coordinate within themselves as well, so that uh, they, they would fill some of those gaps that the cluster was actually uh, doing some of those things that the cluster was doing for them. So it, it's those kind of capacity building exercises that we now need to focus on, um, rather than the than the typical, um, you know, building logistics capacity. Yes, that's important as well. But then building capacity on how, as an organization, you can sustain your operations uh, after the North sector steps up. Thank you. And uh, Virginie, do you have any thoughts about how to marry up those two? Uh, important elements, training and also localization. Uh, yes, I think that uh, in CAR, a good. Uh, sorry. We can good, hear. Uh, gen yeah, sorry. I think that a good GNA can help us to, to identify the weaknesses and the strengths of each local NGO, so we can focus our efforts on the capacity to be strengthened as a priority. Uh, as Mushin said, we cannot do anything at first, so I think uh, I think it's uh, it's the solution. A good GNA in car again. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. And just um, a very uh, interesting question that came into Menti. Um, what percentage of the logistics cluster network comprises of local organizations? Perhaps uh, Atali or Bruno would be able to answer that uh, uh, later. Um, I'm just seeing if we've got any more hands up before I hand back uh, to Kathy to wrap up the day. Um, Gilles, I just wanted to, to just check if you had a final comment before we hand back. Gilles. Yes, just a quick one. Uh, as we said before, beyond the, this meeting, beyond this session and the one tomorrow, we would like really to hear about partners, those who are interested to be on board, to take part of further discussion. Alors, there is this, what we are speaking now, which is a big general, which is how can we address the challenges beyond the presence of a cluster in country? One, we would like to continue with some of you the, the discussion. So it's one topic. And the second topic as well, for which we would like this session not to be the end, but the beginning, is to bring on board those who are interested, partners to speak about a dedicated problematic, a dedicated country. As an example, what, how we know that we need to review our uh, strategy in Yemen, in Bangladesh, in Pacific. We would like to have some partners on board to discuss about, let's say, the way forward and maybe some of the partners as well to take part as a direct participant and direct involvement in the gap and needs analysis that we are already planning just to say that there is room and we really need to do that together and uh, let's pick up your ideas this evening and tomorrow or maybe tomorrow think about it regarding how we can, how you can be involved 
in a more systematic consultation regarding the strategy and the review of the country's operational logistical store policy. Over. Thank you very much, Gilles. And um, just to, to let you know that over half of the logistic cluster operations have been running for five years or more. So that just uh, puts it into perspective. Um, so we'll be hearing uh, two more uh, local GNAs tomorrow and um, there'll be more chance to discuss hopefully uh, those questions there that Gilles had put out there. So thank you very much to uh, our representatives from uh, CAR and also from 